Hi, in this week we will talk about image classification. Classification is an active topic of research. Different areas of computer science using different forms of classification, and there is a plethora of resources that describes the wide variety of algorithms that we currently use. So, in this video, I will briefly introduce the main idea and we will see how to use classifiers in computer vision. As you might know, machine learning can be subdivided into supervised and unsupervised learning. And one example of unsupervised learning is clustering. And as we saw in previous video, we use clustering to perform segmentation. In this case, the algorithm divides the feature space to form groups of pixels that share some characteristics. Classification is really similar, but it falls in the supervised category. Because in classification, we have a set of examples which we know their classes in advance. The idea is to create a model that we can use later to classify a new image. Imagine that you live in a futuristic neighborhood and the veterinarian has automatic home pickup and delivery. When your pet arrives to the clinic, a computer vision system takes a picture to identify if the patient is a dog or a cat and then send it to the right doctor. How do we do this with a classifier? Well, you need several images of both dogs and cats that is usually known as the training set. Then the algorithm will use it to create a model. Basically, we'll look at the common features in the two groups and the differences between them, defining some rule, like a threshold for each class. Here it's important that features that are common in the two groups are useless. For example, generally, both dogs and cats have fur and a tail, so those features do not contribute much for the classification. On the other hand, if the pet is big, the ears are pointing down and it's ruling, there is a high probability that it's a dog. And if it's small, with pointy ears, and has an evil sight, it's more likely to be a cat. The model will include those features, and when a new patient comes to the clinic, the system will use those features to classify it. Yes, there are always problematic examples. So let's see a couple of examples of popular classifiers. K-nearest neighbors, or KNN, is one of the simplest implementations of a classifier, but it can be a really powerful choice in certain applications. It works in this way. You have a feature space in which you have all the instances of your training set. In this case, each point represents a pet, just like in clustering. The feature space can be higher dimensional. But to visualize it, let's take only two. So there are areas in which the two classes are far apart, and others in which the pets are more similar. The name of K nearest neighbors means that when we get a new image, we will compare its features with the K nearest neighbors, and then we will assign the label of the winning class. Then, if our pet falls in this area, we will calculate the distance to every other point and then get the three that are closer. In this case, all three are from the same class. But if we get a different pet that falls in this area, the three nearest neighbors can be mixed. The number of K can change to fit your needs. Usually, it's an odd number. So there's always a winning class. But you could also set a rule to assign the class. For example, you can use k equals to 10, but you only assign the class if one class has more than seven votes. In this case, the chihuahua won't get to see the doctor today. 
As you can see, this algorithm doesn't really train before classification. It actually uses all the data for every new instance. This can be good or bad depending on your application. Remember that the higher the number and the diversity of the examples in your training set, the higher the accuracy of your classification. So this algorithm can have a problem with really big data sets. The alternative is to use a classifier that actually creates the model offline using the training data. One example is support vector machines. SVM is also one of the most common and versatile classifier. It works by finding the line that divides the two groups, looking for points of each class that are closer to each other, and using them as the support vectors. This only means that there is a zone in which the algorithm is not sure of what it's looking at. Support vector machines will create a function, in our example, a line, or a hyperplane in a higher dimensional space. So when we get a new instance, we just need to plug the features in the function. And if the result is positive, then we got a dog. And if the result is negative, then it is a cat. We can also use the area between the support vectors to say that anything that is positive in the margin is probably a dog, and everything that is negative in, in the margin is probably a cat, but is not for sure. SVM is widely used, but its downside is that the classes needs to be linearly separable. So we can find a line or a plane that divide the classes. For example, if we include more small dogs and more big cats in the graph, then SVM will have problems. Of course, there are alternatives to approach those problems, either with other kind of classifier or transforming your data before training. Finally, here we saw the example of two classes but classification can be expanded to classify as many classes as you want. Okay, in this video, we review classification using the example of KNN and SVM classifiers. See you in the next video.